Hello and welcome to It's Your Health. I'm so glad to have Dr. Ivan S. Cohen. He is from the Center for Hair Transplantation Restoration Robotics. Hello there, Dr. Cohen. Welcome to It's Your Health. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's so nice to have you on. I really like this uh, restoration robotics. It sounds very sci-fi. Talk to us about that and uh, about uh, being the uh, first in New England to perform robotic hair transplant procedure. Well, this is a major breakthrough in hair transplantation. Everybody wants things to be minimally invasive these days, and this allows us to do a minimally invasive hair transplant with precision, accuracy, and consistency, Uh, not something that we had available to us before. So this is a um, significant breakthrough. That's exciting. Well, can you kind of describe the procedure to us? Yeah, well, let me tell you a little bit of what the robot does. So um, there's basically two ways to do a hair transplant. What you're doing in a hair transplant is you're moving hair from the back of the head, which is the dominant hair. It's genetically determined to grow forever. And you're moving it to an area where you've lost your hair. So if you look at a bald man, there's always a fringe around his head, and that hair is the permanent hair. So somehow you've got to get hair from that permanent fringe to the area where it's bald. So you can either take it out by cutting out a strip of scalp and then sewing it together. That has been the standard way of doing it for, for years, and you get wonderful results. But you know the problem is you have a linear scar and a lot of postoperative pain, sometimes some numbness. So... The trend has been to try to look for another way that's less invasive, easier for the patient, and doesn't leave any scarring. So we started uh, removing little individual hairs from the back of the head using a tiny little circular instrument. And this is called follicular unit extraction. The problem with it is when you do it by hand, it's a very tedious, painstaking, very long surgery uh, that's difficult on the doctor and difficult on the patient and often very inaccurate because you're really going in blind. You can't really tell what you're doing. So what the robot does is it can line up the angle of the hairs. It has two cameras that uh, every 20 milliseconds takes another reading, and it can adjust the angle that the little tiny circular punch goes in so that almost always it removes the entire hair follicle intact, and they all look the same. They're all consistent, perfect. So that that's that's the breakthrough, and it's twice as fast as doing it by hand. Oh wow, that's incredible! I think for so long we think about the hair plugs, and you think about that image, and this is not at all that. I mean, that's like so yesterday, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> that used to be you know late night TV's joke. You know, is who's got the plugs? But we haven't really seen that, you know, really in almost 20 years. Uh, So hopefully nobody's still walking around with bad plugs. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. So tell us about the recovery, uh, how long, obviously depends on, you know, how much hair. So with this this method, uh, the recovery is very easy. The, The tiny little holes heal up by themselves within a week, but... You know, the night of the surgery, I prescribe pain medication to everyone, and I don't think anyone has taken it since we switched to the robot. Oh, wow. So uh, people are comfortable that night, and uh, they're fine the next day. They can go back to work. Uh, you know, they can resume their athletic activities a lot faster than if you did it the traditional method with stitches in the back. So the recovery time is much, much shorter. And how long now after you put it in? Is it does it like stay a certain length? Is it going to grow? I mean, I'm so what totally happens is in order to use the robot, yeah, uh, the hair in the back has to be trimmed very short. Mm-hmm. So you know, if somebody already has short hair, you know, it's not a problem. If somebody has long hair, we have to trim it down because the robot needs to you know can't can't work with long hair. Okay. So uh, so the hairs are trimmed down. And when they're moved to the bald area, they 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 take and there's a lag time 
between the time that you transplant it and the time the new hairs grow. What happens when you move the hairs, the root kind of goes into a resting period. Mm -hmm. So everything heals up, and it looks like we haven't done anything. And in about three months, the new hair starts to grow, and then it grows basically forever, just like it did in the back of your head. Wow. So if you wanted to, like, because it seems like a lot of times with hair transplants, and this is probably, again, from years ago, it, it always seems kind of short and spiky, but you, you can actually grow it out? Well, yeah, to a little, basically a little bit. what you're doing is mm-hmm. uh, you're just moving the hair follicle, the root of the hair, from the back of the head to the front of the head or wherever you need to move it. To. And once it's there, it just continues to grow just like it did in the back. So, it's, it, I mean, it's basically just like transplanting sod you know you move the sod and you plant it and then the grass grows so this this is what happens on your scalp you're moving the roots you plant them and they grow and they continue to grow oh my goodness that is so exciting when did you know you wanted to get into hair restoration well you know when i first went into practice i um i didn't really know anything about it and it was a relatively new field and it just it just appealed to me and you know, I've watched and participated in the changes that have occurred, you know, over the last 30 years, really, and it's been re- remarkable, you know, that, uh, you know, we've gone from the plugs to really undetectable hair transplants. Wow. Now, how many of these do you do, like, a week or a month, or is it... Well, I do few? one every day. Oh, my gosh. I've been doing that for many, many years. Wow. So it's thousands and thousands of procedures. Now, is it pretty costly, or is there a? I guess it depends, obviously, on how well, much hair you're missing. Well, the cost depends on you know the numbers of grafts that we transplant. So, you know, if somebody's just you know starting to lose it in their in their temples. You know, they have a receding hairline. That's going to be much less costly than somebody who's bald and wants to you know replace the whole scalp. So it could vary from you know as little as. Uh, Three thousand dollars, you know, maybe up to twelve thousand dollars. So there's a there's a big range. It just depends, you know, how much you're going to try to accomplish. Now, on your website, do you have before and after photos so people can get an idea of what these the people look like? It's men and women. Right. So I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's a remarkable change, and uh, you know, like I said, I mean, you should not be able to tell that. Someone has had a hair transplant. That's why, uh, you know, you don't really see good hair transplants because you shouldn't be able to tell that they are hair transplants. Oh, okay. I get it. Well, give us your website. So the website is dricohen.com. Or if you just Google, you know, hair transplant Connecticut or Google hair transplant in my name, it'll come up. So it's dricohen.com. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. I really appreciate you coming on. It's a pleasure.